if you're going to graph square roots, it's useful to, um, to kind of make that transition to think about graphing squares. The graph y equals x squared is hopefully somewhat familiar to you. It looks like a parabola. Now, instead of squaring x, we're going to take the square root. And what that does essentially is it switches the role of the x and the y. Because if y squared were equal to x, that would mean that y is equal to the square root of x, right? Because if I take the square root of both sides, I get something like this. We do have to deal with issues of positives and negatives, but we'll, we'll look at that in a second. But there's a clear relationship to the graph of the square and of the square root. Essentially, when you're graphing the square root, you take that parabola and you turn it on its side. Moreover, because the radical means the positive square root, we can erase the side in which uh, the y is negative. And we still get a function, because now it's going to pass that vertical line test. And that is a graph of our parent function, y equals square root of x, the very most basic uh, type of uh, square root function. All other uh, square root functions can be seen as a transformation of that function. So for example, if I were to do um, y is equal to square root of x plus 3, all I would do is take the same graph and shift everything up 1, 2, 3 spaces. So it's exactly the same, except everything is shifted up by uh, three spaces. And that would be the graph. So adding a number at the end shifts it all up uh, a number of spaces. Of course, then if I were to subtract, let's say y equals square root of x minus four, that would move everything down four spaces. and I'd get something that looked like that. So adding on the end or subtracting on the end has the effect of moving things up and down. If I were to, however, do something inside my square root, as for example, if I did square root of x plus five, that's going to move the entire thing five spaces to the left. So I go back one, two, three, four, five, and replicate the same thing in that direction. Um, moving back one, two, three. So it looks something like this. It might not be intuitive that the plus 5 under the square root moves it to the left. You see plus 5, you might be thinking moving it to the right. But let's think about what actually happens. Suppose that um, I'm going to make a little table, and I think that will help you see what's going on. So if I have x, and let's say that x is 0. And so if x is 0, uh, then the square root of x would be 0. That's why we have over here the point 0, 0. Um, but if x is 0 in this case, then we would get, this, we get the square root of 0 plus 5, which is going to be the square root of 5, which is a little bit over 2. So you can see up here I'm a bit over 2 on my graph. Um, Let's look at a couple more values. I think a particularly telling example is at 4, because in this case, we get some uh, perfect squares. Square root of 4 is 2. So on this graph, when we're at 1, 2, 3, 4, we should be right on 2. And my graph went slightly above, but um, a little sloppy, but hopefully you get the idea. Whereas for if I'm at 4 on this graph, I should be at 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. Again, my graph's not absolutely perfect, 
but you can see the idea how this actually shifts it not to the right but shifts it uh, to the left. So in a similar fashion, if I have y equals x minus 3 under the square root, it's going to shift it 3 units to the right. So everything will simply be shifted uh, 3 units to the right. And I'd get something which looks something like that. Of course, there can also be combinations of these things. If I were, to, for example, to have x plus 2 under the radical and then minus 3, that would shift it back 2 and down 3. So my graph would start from here and then go up according to the normal pattern. Each point would be back uh, 2 and down 3. So my graph would end up, in this case, looking something like this. Another thing that can happen is a vertical stretch or shrink. If I were to multiply my square root of x by a number like 3, that would have the effect of stretching things out vertically. Um, because, well, they would both start at 0, 0. But the next point, when the original is 1, then uh, for the blue function here, it's going to be 3 times 1, or 3. So everything gets stretched out and upward. At um, It's also going to be, when this is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 2, um, that's going to be up at 6. So the whole thing is going to be stretched out. Something like that. So having a number here that's bigger than 1, that makes all of the numbers bigger and stretches things out. Um, the other side of that coin would be if we had something like this, y equals, uh, let's say, 1 half square root of x. That's going to make everything smaller and closer to the x-axis. So it's again a little bit tough to draw that because it's so small, but it would look something. <laughs> I know, that's not great. It would look something like that. Let me try one more time to do a little better job. Wipes. It's difficult, but the, the idea is that it's basically every point is half as tall as my original parent function, the red one. And all of these things, adding or subtracting inside the absolute value, um, adding things at the end, and multiplying are going to have different effects of moving it to the left, right, up, down, or stretching it vertically, um, or shrinking it vertically. So just to recap, if I add something after the radical, like I take y equals radical x or square root of x plus 4, that's going to move everything up. Um, subtracting after the radical, therefore, would do the opposite. Adding inside the radical would move everything to the left. So if that x plus 4 were inside or underneath the square root symbol, that would move everything to the left. And multiplying by a number that's bigger than 1 is going to have the uh, effect of stretching it out vertically. Um, multiplying then by a small fraction would have the opposite effect of shrinking it vertically. So those are some of the basic rules of transformations uh, for a graph of square roots. And uh, frankly, they're applicable to lots of different types of functions. But we're specifically here addressing square roots. So hopefully that helps give you some uh, more insight into how you uh, graph your square roots. Thank you.